Welcome to the Belmont Business Report. I'm your host, Paula Rajan. The Belmont Business Report is a community service that highlights Belmont businesses so we can meet the owners and learn more about their business. Joining me today is Joanne Lakers, owner of Happy Dog Behavior Training mm -hmm. and her faithful companion, Zorba. <laughs> Welcome, Joanne and Zorba. Thank you, Paul. It's great to be here. Joanne, tell us about yourself and how you got started in the business. Well, I think I always wanted to be a teacher, but never really knew what I wanted to teach. And then, you know, had become fascinated with dogs and how they learn and how their little minds work. And um, I found my passion. I uh, teach puppy classes right here in Belmont at okay. uh, Pampered Pooch, right on Beach Street. I know it. And I, uh, oh, I start new classes about once every six weeks. And it's great. There's nothing like walking into a room full of puppies, raw talent, and seeing how they improve over the course of uh, the, the class. Unconditional love, right? Unconditional love. Uh, most of my business is actually private training where I work with people in their homes. So it's one-on-one. One-on-one -on -one. One -on -one, or with the families where we work in their homes or maybe at an outside location depending on where we are in the training. Uh, a lot of it is new puppy owner information. Most of that training is for the owners, not the puppies. Uh, I also do work with behavior problems and help address specific behavior problems that unfortunately, you know, they're all too common, but um, well, you, you know, we work through them. You said two things that ring true with me. <laughs> uh, owner's education, because a lot of times I think it's the owner, not the puppy or the dog. And um, secondly, a new puppy. Um, can you give us some tips of uh, uh, someone that's looking for a new puppy, um, uh, some of the key uh, factors to take into consideration? Well, people, when they really look for a puppy, they should really research the breed, research the breed characteristics, and uh, really think about matching the breed to their lifestyle, not trying to change their lifestyle to match the breed. Now, so, Zorb is a Yorkshire Terrier? He is. Okay. He is. So he's, he's no, almost nine. Full but of he, personality. He, I had one for 16 years. <laughs> Go ahead. He's an active little boy, but uh, he's slowing down a little now. Okay. Okay, so uh, uh, first thing is breed in, in looking for a new puppy? Yeah, you really want to decide big or small, shedding, non-shedding, active versus a little more sedentary. Uh, do you live in an apartment? Do you have a, a big backyard? Do you like to take hikes? Um, so those kinds of things that you want to really think about the characteristics. Obviously, if there's children, if there's um, older people that the dog is going to have to be around. So you really want to take all those things into consideration. Okay. I've talked with you in many times, and I'll tell you, there's nobody better if you want to have your dog <laughs> and or the owner trained or socialized. Oh, uh, Joanne is the one to call, <laughs> and Zorba probably. <laughs> Uh, what are the most important things a new puppy or dog on, owner should focus on once they get the new, new puppy? Well, I would have to say house training, socialization, and home alone, teaching the puppy to be okay home alone. Um, house training is obvious. Everybody focuses on house training, and they certainly understand the importance of that. And it's all about teaching the puppy the right place to go, the more rewarding place to go, and preventing the mistakes inside. So it's As, positive. It's all positive. Yeah. Um, but it's, you know, so it's really helping your puppy learn where they should go and helping to prevent making mistakes of where they shouldn't go. So everybody tends to want to focus on that first thing. But I think two of the other things that people aren't as aware of that are very, very important are socialization for a young puppy, uh, exposing that pup, your new puppy to people, places, things, noises. Hi. Yeah. Uh, people, places, things, noises. Um, the, the real world, all the things that they're going to have to deal with. Because anything that they're not exposed to, uh, they might become fearful of later on. So it's very important for that early positive exposure. Uh, secondly, you want to get up, don't you? Secondly, um, teaching the puppy to be home alone. So okay. if owners have the luxury of being home, that's great. They, they're going to be spending a lot of time with their puppy. I know you have to supervise very closely for house training. Uh, the tendency might be to let the puppy take naps in your lap or cuddled with you, cuddled next to you. But you really want to teach that puppy how to be alone because Otherwise, separation issues can result. Okay. Crate or no crate, what is that? Um, well, the crate can be a really good management tool. It can be a safe place for your puppy. It can give you peace of mind. You know your puppy's safe when you can't watch them. A lot of puppies learn to love their crates, um, and that's where they should be taking naps 
and they should learn to be alone when you're home and when you're out. Because if separation issues result, that's a very difficult problem to resolve. Okay. So you want to prevent that from happening. Okay. Well, again, you called Joanne. Make sure. <laughs> she'll she'll uh, walk you through it to make sure that everything is smooth. I have a question for you. Um, we have we've just taken one of my daughter's dogs, and we noticed lately that the dog is a uh, uh, it's a she. She's barking uh, more on the deck at uh, people going by than before. And I'm trying to figure out whether it's territorial or if it's socialization. In other words, it, it does, it, it, her name is Sweetie. Okay. Does Sweetie want to go meet the person? Uh, is that why she's barking? Or is it a matter of this is my territory? Who are you? How can you t tell? Well, it's a little <clears throat> bit, of, it can be a little bit of both. And sometimes it is hard to know. And when it comes to barking, you really want to try to figure out why they're barking so you can address it properly. Um, one way to tell is if you're out on walks or you're, in, you're someplace else, does she still bark at the people when she's out okay. of her territory? Yes, yes. Uh, no, so, actually no. Okay. No, outside of a territory, no. So it may be territorial, it may be a little bit of alert barking. Uh, there's different ways to deal with that and um, sometimes it requires a little experimenting, um, okay. but there's still positive ways to deal with okay. that. Well, I'll have to make an appointment then. <laughs> okay. uh, D describe your approach to training, because you and I have talked several times, and I think your approach is, is very, very positive, and as, as far as um, my experiences with dogs, it's the right approach. Well, thank you. Um, yes, po I use positive reinforcement training, which basically, yes, you're a little nervous See today, that? aren't you? Oh, good boy. Good boy, Zorb. I use positive reinforcement training, which basically focuses on rewarding good behavior. There's no okay. need to use harsh punishment to teach a puppy. Positive reinforcement training will help you develop the best relationship with your puppy and also help the puppy learn. It'll really help the puppy okay. learn so in a more positive, positive way. Positive, positive, positive. Um, one of the things, I focus on positive reinforcement training, but I also try to focus on really helping new owners understand how their puppy learns. Because if they really understand that foundation, how does the puppy process information? Um, it'll help them have a better relationship and it'll help them train at a level where they can be successful. I have an idea. Um, just so, so the audience will know, I have called you and I said, Joanne, I hear great things about mm -hmm. you. I hear you are the best. Come to my house and tell me what I'm doing right and what I'm <laughs> doing wrong. So now you, you knock on the door and I say, hi, Joanne, this is Zorba. Zor uh, you say, hi, this is uh, Joanne. Um, Zorba is territorial. How, how would you, how, how is the appointment go? I think that's what, that probably would give uh, the audience Hi. a good idea. Um, well, <laughs> yes, you're a little finicky today, aren't you? Um, well, first of all, I get She's information. Starstruck. She's starstruck. I get She's information starstruck. before I even come to the house. So I, I have my clients fill out a form online. I'll often talk to them on the phone or exchange some emails. So I will get some background information to really understand what, what either we're dealing with or what we think we're dealing with. Okay. Sometimes what we're dealing with or what we think we're dealing with is a little different when I get there. Yeah, I bet. And I really try to focus on the priority of um, you know, what's important to that owner, what's the most critical issue they're trying to resolve. Sometimes we find out that there's other underlying issues that we need to focus on first. So um, I do try to start with the basics and then really zero in on their particular problem. Okay, so the approach is positive reinforcement training. And, yes. And, and um, one of the things that um, probably is part of this is also, in addition to helping people understand how dogs learn, is understanding how to add difficulty slowly and gradually. A lot of people try to do too much too soon. Um, you know, they complain to me, oh, my dog doesn't come when called. And they've worked on, in the house, the dog comes when called, or maybe in the backyard, but then they try to jump to a, a dog park or, or woods or a field where they're 30, 40 feet away, and there's other dogs, and the dog's not coming. And in effect, what they've just done was probably jump from, you know, second grade level come to college uh, level yeah. come without practicing in between. So I really try to help them understand how to add that difficulty slowly so their dog or puppy is really successful every step of the way. Um, instead of they jump, they ask for too much and the puppy's failing, the puppy's actually not learning. So it's a lot of common sense as, as, as far as uh, learning once I, goes. Once I explain it, it is common sense. Yeah. It's just a matter of knowledge and, and, and yeah. understanding it. Okay, relax, relax. Good boy, relax. Can you uh, give us some insight 
as to how the dogs learn? Sure. Um, basically, dogs repeat behaviors that are rewarding. Dogs do what works. Dogs do what feels good. Dogs do what um, works to get them what they want. Yeah, like you. Yes. <laughs> um, yes, and I indulge him, but he's a good boy, so it's okay. Um, anyway, dogs basically will do rewarding, whatever gets rewarded, they'll repeat. They learn okay. basically by the consequence of their actions. Um, one of the things that is not always obvious to owners is what's rewarding to their dog. So, for example, um, they don't understand how powerful attention is as a reward. So every puppy in the world from day one gets rewarded for jumping. Um, they put their little paws up, we look down, we smile, we pet them, and now that puppy's just been rewarded for jumping. Um, and so, you know, that may be fine. All right, settle down, settle down, <laughs> settle down. Okay, settle down. Um, but they need to be aware of what they're rewarding versus what they might be inadvertently rewarding. Um, okay. Another very um, common misunderstanding is when, during the house training process, when a dog has an accident and they've been teaching the puppy to go outside where they should go and yet the puppy's still having accidents inside and people don't understand it. But what they need to understand is every time that puppy goes or pees, uh, it feels good. It relieves their bladder. So it f works to make them feel better. So in their minds, there's no reason why they wouldn't continue to do that. Do that right. So it's kind of giving that kind of understanding into how dogs learn uh, that's important. And they are smart. They are smart. And they are smart. They learn very quickly. It's either we're training them or they're training us. <laughs> <laughs> uh, you have a blog uh, that I want the audience to know about, and we'll get some contact information, and you'll see it coming across the screen during, during the show as well. Um, but the blog covers many of the questions I had as far as my ownership uh, of, of a dog goes. And uh, there was separation anxiety, uh, home alone you mentioned, um, different kinds of barking. Uh, it's really uh, right on as far as some of the problems you might encounter or some of the answers you might be looking for as far as your, your dog uh, and, and dog uh, um, traits go. So make sure that you look at Joanne's uh, blog and contribute to it. Thanks. Uh, I, I try to um, update that once or twice a week with new training tips. Okay. Well, that gets us to, to my next question is what other tips can you provide for um, us dog owners? Well, one of the tips especially, <laughs> well, and you know what, this tip applies whether you're a new puppy owner or it's a dog that you've had for five or six years. Don't ignore good behavior. Um, Don't ignore good behavior. Okay. Especially uh, for new puppy owners, we tend to give our puppies tons of attention when they're nipping and chewing and stealing and, and barking, and then they're being good. They're finally lying quietly being good, and we kind of think, oh, good, let's leave them alone. Um, that's the time you should actually go and very calmly praise your puppy, maybe give your puppy a treat. But basically think about catching your puppy in the act of doing something good. Reward those spontaneous acts of good behavior. Because if you think about it, there's really two kinds of behaviors. There's behaviors that are on command, behaviors that you tell your puppy what you want them to do, sit, come, lie down. But then there's everything else. There's everything else that they just do by default. So if you start to reward these spontaneous acts of good behavior, your puppy will actually choose to do these more often and it's very powerful and it's, it's just a wonderful change that people can really see. Off top topic, does it work for husbands too? It does. Okay. Um, you see, so, so, you know, we tend to nag our, our spouses okay. or our significant others okay. when they're not doing what we want and then when they finally, you know, wash the dishes, we don't tend to thank them. We okay. kind of take it for granted. Same thing. Okay. <laughs> uh, I know you're very busy and you have, uh, you, you uh, work with Pampered Pooch and you also uh, work one-on-one -on -one out of homes. What is the most common uh, request from uh, 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 customers for, for, for your services? Well, I, I mean, in the general category of private training, um, I would say it's probably a split between, you know, new puppy, new, I just adopted a new rescue dog versus I'm having a specific behavior problem. And right. I would say, you know, for the behavior issues, sometimes they're just normal, you know, my, my dog doesn't listen, uh, my dog doesn't come when called. Some of that is just normal adolescent evolution of the dog. Um, and a lot of times um, there are behavior issues. A very common behavior issue 
is my dog really goes crazy when he sees other dogs or other people on the street. A lot of barking, a lot of reactive behavior. So it's mostly behavioral. So that's a very yeah. common behavior problem. There's a very specific approach to changing that behavior. And more often than not, that behavior is due to fear. And more often than not, that behavior is due to not having been extensively socialized to those things as a young puppy. How can we get the dog owners to pick up their own poop? Oh, well, that, <laughs> that I don't know. That's, um, that's, that's a matter, not your of, that's a matter of consequence, you know, if there's well, a real negative consequence. Moral responsibility. But yes. how many times do you see it? It's, a, it's, I, it's really I, it's, a shame. It's a, human, it's a human failure, honestly. It is. Um, we covered a lot. Um, I learned a lot. Is there anything else you'd like to add to what we've uh, covered today? Well, or reinforce anyone. Uh, and Zorba, you're welcome. To, <laughs> I know you're fine. You're welcome to it. Um, well, in addition to things like rewarding, um, you know, reward that spontaneous behavior, uh, another kind of foundation or different way of thinking of interacting with your dog is instead of focusing on what you don't want your dog to do, teach him what you want him to do instead. So jumping is a prime example. You know, you see dogs that are jumping and the owner will, no, stop, off, you know, down. And instead, tell him to sit. Tell him what you want him to do. And make the sitting more rewarding than jumping. And if you think about a teacher in school, if she only ever told her students, wrong answer, wrong answer, they'd never learn what the right answer is. So when, a, when you're telling your puppy what not to do, they're really not learning what they should do. And it's so much easier to just tell your puppy to sit or tell your puppy to lie down. Um, and those are, you know, if they're doing either of those, they usually can't be getting into trouble. Okay, okay. Uh, I want you to tell us how we get in touch with you. Uh, for, for our audience to call you, to get, make an appointment, to get uh, together with you. Sure, I'd be happy to. Um, well, first of all, there's a lot of information on my website, uh, happydogtrain.com. www.happydogtrain.com. And uh, that's where you can see my blogs. That's where you can see class schedules. Um, there's contact information on the website. There's a lot of information in about my general philosophy. Um, on that is my email, joanne at happydogtrain.com, J-O-A-N-N-E, -N -N -E, at happydogtrain.com. And people can feel free to call me at 617-448-7447. OK, that's 617-448-7447, right? And I guess as a, a last uh, note that I'm very proud of is I actually have a puppy training app on, available on iTunes. That, oh, that's, I, that's good. Yes, and I so, saw that. Tell but, us about Please. Yes, I'm very excited about that's, that. Yes. Uh, for those of you with an iPhone, iPad, iTouch, uh, the yes, app yeah. is called Puppy Coach 101. You can search for it on iTunes, Puppy Coach 101. Okay. And it's a video-based puppy training app, but it applies to any new owner of a, a new dog. Uh, it has very nice short um, segments, video-based segments, and it kind of goes through a lot of the basics, how dogs learn, how to help your dog love his crate, how to teach him his name, drop it, and some of the basics. And you can basically have very nice video clips at your fingertips That's um, fantastic. to help give you refreshers. I'm so glad you brought that up. I, 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 I think that's very, very important. That's Thanks. That's very and important. I spent a lot of time with Joanne and Zorba, and believe me, she is the real thing. So <laughs> if you have any problems or questions, call Joanne and you'll be happy you did. Um, that concludes this segment of the Belmont Business Report. I'd like to thank my guests, Joanne and Zorba. <laughs> thank you. I know I learned a lot, and hopefully you have too. Thank you for joining us. We'll see you on the next episode of the Belmont Business Report. I'm Paul Arasian, reminding you to support our local businesses. Thanks, Paul. Thank you. That was great. It's over.